Welcome to Village Voices, a series of talks by and for Rose Villa residents. Today's talk is A Handy Guide to Portland's Radical History, Sites, Images, and Walking Tours by Michael Monk. I'm here today to talk about the history of Radical Portland, as I've tried to present in my Portland Red Guide. When I retired from work, my working life back east and came back to Portland where I came of age, I guess you could call it, uh, in high school and college, for the first time in my life I had, uh, I chose where I was going to live and how I was going to spend my time. So basically I spent my time originally uh, researching the history of the city in which I was going to spend the rest of my life, focusing on its radical past. Uh, when I returned to Portland, one of the first things that I noticed was it presents itself as a city to people who live here and people who visit in the names of its streets, its buildings, and its monuments. And I immediately noticed that they were named for the winners in the economic competition that our economic system uh, requires. They were the people who exploited natural resources, who took the land from the Native Americans who lived here before, the people who exploited workers in the factories, and missing was the other side of that competition. Those who lost, but those who uh, believed or committed themselves to a better world rather than their personal position in it. In other words, they uh, opposed those who the city now honors as its pioneers, as its entrepreneurs uh, and uh, those who are considered success in the mainstream narrative. So I decided to dedicate uh, my time to presenting that other side, those who struggled on behalf of the exploited, on behalf of people uh, removed from their lands, and so on. Uh, my uh, efforts resulted in a guidebook, and I chose it deliberately, that format, uh, in order to, I hope, produce the same kind of curiosity from the physical space that people are witnessing, the same kind of response that patriotic sites like Mount Rushmore are intended to inspire uh, in the people. So the guidebook is actually a series of physical locations that are associated with the people, the organizations, and the events that mark important parts of Portland's radical history. I'd like to begin by uh, focusing our attention on sites that are nearby Rose Villa. We, of course, live in an area that was originally uh, inhabited by another country, the Native Americans, and white settlers were uh, foreigners who came and took away that land. It was not the pro uh, easy process that mainstream history uh, traditionally has described it as, but actually a very brutal, violent overtake, overthrow of the existing population. And here in nearby Rose Villa, we had one of the important events of that uh, conflict when in Oregon City on Main Street, 
before about a thousand spectators, <laughs> Sheriff Joseph Meek hanged five Indian, Cayuse Indian resistors, the leaders of a resistance against the settlers' takeover. Uh, also uh, in Oregon City, uh, we had uh, a class warfare when uh, the, uh, the uh, paper workers at the Westland paper mill uh, fought against strike breakers in 1907 on Main Street again in Oregon City. We also historically have a uh, link to utopian communities which I guess the current term is intentional communities, but they were, uh, they were uh, founded by people who were uncomfortable with industrialization and urbanization. And they decided to found what were called colonies, utopian colonies. The nearest one to Rose Villa is about 20 miles south at uh, Aurora, which is now a uh, town uh, well integrated into the market economy. Uh, we also have, not too far away, in Polk County, near Mill City, uh, the t colony of Socialist Valley. And there's an interesting uh, aspect to Socialist Valley in the sense that the only official road sign in the United States that has the word socialist in it is Socialist Valley Road. And you can see it about 35 miles from uh, Rose Villa. Um, and uh, if you've ever been to the Oregon coast and are familiar with the towns there, uh, it may be that you haven't known that uh, a post office uh, on the Oregon coast uh, between 1904 and 1907 was called Karl Marx and that town now is today's Neskowin. So uh, nearby Rose Villa in our neighborhoods of Selwood uh, and Oregon City we also uh, look at the uh, Oregon Yacht Club uh, which is just off of uh, Oaks Park. Uh, the Yacht Club was the first home of one of the partners in that notorious uh, duo of John Reed and Louise Bryant, uh, who reported on the Russian Revolution and uh, were featured in uh, the movie Reds uh, where John Reed was played by Warren Beatty and uh, Louise Bryant by Diane Keaton. Uh, so in 1909, uh, uh, Louise Bryant lived on a houseboat in what is still today the Oregon Yacht Club. And until she left Portland in 1915 uh, for New York and uh, her the partnership with John Reed, her studio was in a building directly across from the public library that still exists at 1033 Southwest Yamhill. Uh, also in Selwood uh, was the uh, farm uh, from which the anarchist newspaper, the Firebrand, was published between 1895 and 1897 until it was suppressed on the charges of obscenity by the uh, U.S. Post Office. Uh, there was also a strike at the Oregon City Woolen Mills in 1907 that's the subject of a much more recent play that was put on by the New York New uh, Northwest Labor College in uh, the 1970s. Uh, still in Selwood at the existing intersection of Southeast Tacoma and the uh, railroad tracks uh, was the site of a suicide by a prominent wobbly or 
Industrial Workers of the World member uh, Angus Thelsha Fair, uh, and she uh, killed herself by standing in front of the Oregon City train at that intersection. Finally, uh, in our neighborhood on McLaughlin Boulevard in Milwaukee, Dr. Ruth Barnett, a abortion provider, f was finally uh, stopped from continuing her career when the Clackamas County uh, courts found her guilty of manslaughter and sentenced her uh, to the penitentiary. Now, all told, there were 194 locations. There are 194 sites uh, of Portland radical history in the book. And obviously, we can't describe even a small part of them. So I'll try to focus on areas, neighborhoods of the city with the largest concentration. And the one that uh, arises first is Skid Row, which is West Burnside uh, Street. It's an area that attracted seasonal workers in the off season from the lumber, from mining, from fishing industries. When they were off work for seasonal reasons, they needed entertainment, they needed a place to stay. So a large number of bars and uh, uh, hotels uh, developed in the area. And of course, radicals followed them. So the headquarters of the IWW was at Second and Burnside for many, many years. And it was also the site that one of its members, Joe Hill, first sang what became famous as uh, the Pie in the Sky song. That was in 1910. Across the street from the Wobbly headquarters was Tom Burns' clock shop, which had a radical library in the basement, and many uh, Re Portland radicals uh, developed their uh, ideology and worldview by uh, visiting that library. Uh, that the intersection of Second and Third and Burnside were also the sites of the 1932 Bonus March, uh, beginning in Portland and ending up in Washington D.C., and also a frequent uh, uh, site of strikers in the 1934 Longshore Strike, which is probably the most prominent uh, labor history uh, event in the city. And also uh, in the Burnside area, in 1942, Minoru Yasui was arrested for defying the curfew on Japanese Americans and sent to prison. Another major uh, site of uh, places listed in the Red Guide were the park blocks, the plaza blocks, as they were called then, uh, in front of the uh, city hall and county courthouse. And of course, today, the site of the notorious demonstrations against uh, police racism and the president's uh, special troops uh, in front of what is the uh, U.S. courthouse now. Anyway, those, those park blocks were uh, the favorite site of Wobbly and Socialist Party and labor on, later on the Communist Party for mass rallies and assemblies and protests, marches uh, in, uh, intended to demonstrate that there was an alternative to the way things were. Specifically, in 1934, uh, the radicals raised a red flag over City Hall, which attracted a great deal of public attention, and of course that was uh, its purpose. So uh, I thought also it might be appropriate to focus 
on a few areas and events and organizations that uh, led the early struggles against racism, against fascism, and for uh, the working class. And uh, it may come as no surprise, or it may, but wait for it, those actions were very often led by the local Communist Party. Uh, in the early 1930s, the Communists organized a movement to save the life of a black man, Ted Jordan, uh, who was convicted of murder in a tinged uh, and prejudiced trial. Uh, they were also active in the protests against other uh, police shootings of black people in Giles Lake and Vanport in 1945. They were also, the communists were also the organizers of the efforts to help uh, or the Vanport uh, flood of whom many of uh, were black. Uh, finally, uh, in, they, uh, the West Side Club of the Communist Party uh, held demonstrations to uh, persuade Safeway in Northwest Portland to hire black uh, workers in 1948. And the Albina Club of the Communist Party, which was composed primarily of black people, uh, endorsed the Progressive Party's campaign uh, for president in 1948 under Henry Wallace, and one of its members, Eustace Curry, was the first black candidate to actually win a Democratic ballot place uh, in the primary uh, for state legislature for Multnomah County. Uh, communists were also the leaders of what small protests occurred when the Nazi battleship Bremen uh, came to Portland in 1937. It was welcomed by uh, Portland city uh, municipal and business leaders, uh, while at the same time uh, the communists even uh, launched small boats uh, with protest signs. Many were arrested for their premature anti-fascism. They also uh, organized a protest against the shipping of scrap metal to Japan in the years before uh, World War II. And finally, there were 11 Oregonians who went to Spain to fight in the Spanish Civil War against Franco's fascists on behalf of the Spanish Republic. And one of them, William Miller, was killed in, a, in one of the last battles of the Lincoln Brigade. He came from a farm near Dayton and joined the Communist Party in Portland. Finally, uh, in the labor uh, area, communists and old wobblies, much sometimes the same person, by the way, were active in the Longshore Union during the great 1934 strike. And the uh, union that emerged from it, the ILWU, uh, commemorates Bloody Wednesday uh, at Terminal 4, probably the uh, bloodiest event in Portland labor history, when Portland police shot and wounded four strikers uh, while trying to break the picket lines at Terminal 4 in St. John's. The leader of the ILWU in subsequent years, Francis Murnane, was the only Portland or Oregon labor leader uh, officially honored with a public monument. And uh, this, uh, this happened after his death in 1968, and a uh, rather elaborate uh, monument was built just uh, south of the Burnside Bridge on the Portland waterfront. It is, I think, of very, very significant that that 
only monument to a labor leader was torn down and uh, and demolished in uh, 2007 to make way for the commercial Saturday market. Uh, this was an act that uh, many of us uh, described as municipal vandalism. Uh, and also, uh, radicals were uh, prominent in the organization of the International Woodworkers Union, the CIO uh, union, the only union that had uh, its headquarters in Portland. And that union, uh, in, its, uh, in 1949, was expelled from the uh, CIO on charges of being communist dominated. So, uh, so looking back on uh, this very brief outline of the Red Guide, I want to emphasize that uh, there are, as I keep saying, 194 separate places that are uh, described very briefly in the book, but you are also uh, offered walking tours and maps, and uh, I think it's worthwhile too to, to think of our own uh, protest here at Rose Villa, that for the past month or so we've been standing out on River Road to protest uh, exactly what has been protested in the past, uh, police racism, equal rights for all people. and. Uh, in a sense, uh, Roseville residents that participate uh, in that protest are actually standing in the footsteps of the radicals that we have tried to chronicle in the Red Guide. Michael Monk's Portland Red Guide is available in the Rose Villa Library.